Dave and Natalie for hosting our Smallest event here. And uh, I'm Vaughn, for those of you who don't know me. Um, my business is Spirit of Health and in Oakland Park, Kansas. And I do a lot of classes, a lot of lectures. Haven't done any since spring, so I might be a little rusty. Um, but today we're going to talk about Eat This, Not That. Who's read those, like, Eat This, Not That articles or whatever? Okay. Well, this isn't going to be like, you know, eat this dessert, not this dessert, because that has less calories. This is going to be a lot more informative than that. This is, um, if, you're, if you're new to some of this stuff, it might be shocking. If you've been into health for a while, this might not be anything new. We'll see. Hopefully everybody learns uh, something, or at least <coughs> raises some questions in your mind for, for deeper research. I'm going to talk about some main categories, and we'll just get into it. The first one I'm going to talk about is sugar. Um, I want to start with sugar because I believe it is the number one most damaging thing um, that is causing disease in America, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. Uh, mainly two things is the misunderstanding of fats and the misunderstanding of sugar. So we're going to start with sugar, processed sugar. Um, on the eat this side, it's pretty simple. It's what God has provided to us in its natural form. What have we always had for sugar throughout history? We've had honey, and we've had fruit. Now if you happen to live somewhere where you had maple trees, you have maple syrup. But even that, you can overdo it because it takes about 40 gallons of sap out of a maple tree to make one gallon of maple uh, syrup. So it's still very concentrated. You can still definitely overdo even maple syrup. But we really want to eat what God's naturally given to us. I'm also a big fan of stevia. So I have some maple syrup here. <coughs> Who's used, who uses stevia? I do. Okay. I yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Um, if you're not familiar with stevia, this is a plant that God made that is 200 times naturally sweeter than sugar. I have it growing in the garden. I can actually find some oh, cool. and pass yeah, it let's, around. Let's get some and check it out. And you can just eat the leaves. They're super sweet. They're fantastic. 100% safe for diabetes or anybody who has sugar issues. There's no calories. There's no sugar. It's just a sweet plant. So this can help satisfy that craving. And then honey. Honey, you want to get a raw honey. You can get local honey from local beekeepers. Um, most of the stuff in the store is heated and processed. And honestly, not even honey sometimes. They add uh, corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup and all kinds of weird things. You don't even know what you're getting in the grocery store anymore. So you really want to be careful of, uh, when you're buying honey. Um, but they, these are the natural things that have been given to us for, for sugar. And, They'll, there'll be a slower, more controlled release into the body when you eat whole fruits and honey and things like that. Now when we eat the processed sugar, your cane sugar, um, I don't know if we, I think some people probably have an understanding that if it's brown, like it's healthy for us. Okay, this is brown sugar, this is not healthy. Okay, just because it's brown. Um, and even on the do not eat this list, I have cane sugar. Okay. And that's going to surprise people because they're, well, isn't that, it's organic and it's 100% pure and it's cane sugar. Well, the, the joke I always like to say is, um, how did God make sugar? How did God make cane sugar? Has anybody ever had sugar cane before? Okay, what's sugar cane look like? Bamboo shoots. It looks like a bamboo stock. It's hard. It's hard as a rock. So God made it that way because you wouldn't be able to consume it, that over consume it if you ate it in, uh, in that form, in that hard stick form. So what we do is we take a half an acre of this stuff and we put it into a bag of sugar and we wonder why it acts like a drug in our system. Um, sugar, scientifically studied to be more addictive than cocaine or heroin. It's the most addictive substance on our planet and again, it's the number one thing causing disease in America is sugar. And it's in everything. I mean, I have a few examples, but this is on the, the not eat this side, but you buy ranch dressing, ketchup, cereal, bread, it doesn't matter, it all has sugar in it. Why does it all have sugar in it? Companies know it's addictive, it's super cheap. Not just you, but also your kids. They want your kids screaming at you all the time to buy the Fruit Loops and all this and that because they get addicted to the stuff and then you buy their products over and over and over again. 
So they make the millions of dollars while we get all sick and full of disease. So the main reason I do this class is to understand that there's certain things you can put in your body that promote health and wellness, and there's other things you put in your body that will create sickness and disease. And we don't want to look at food as sickness and disease. We want to get a pill or something to fix whatever's wrong with us or every other excuse. But what it comes down to is what we do and don't put in our body. And the example I like to give people to make it, to make it really clear is God made everything perfectly. And if we choose the things that he made to put in our body, we'll have health and life in our bodies. And if we choose to put man-made, chemical-filled, nutrient-void, processed away from God's original design, things in our body, it will create sickness and disease. And we're starting to realize that more and more because we are the most diseased nation on the entire planet. Um, and 100 years ago, pre-1900, we didn't have hardly any of the diseases we have now. People used to die of infections and going to war. Now people mm -hmm. die of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. We've created it in the last 100 years. We've created it with our choices. So I just really want to make that point. Um, and then on the list, I put ingredients ending in os. So if you start to read food labels, if you're not a food label reader, sucrose, fructose, maltose, <laughs> all of these oses, all they are is sugar, sugar, sugar. That's why we got to get away from packaged foods and we got to start eating whole foods, whole foods in their natural form. And I have all kinds of information up here too. I have an article right here. If anybody wants it, it's 146 reasons sugar destroys your health. And what's cool about this article is I didn't, I wanted this just to be a one pager, but with each of these 146 things, she has a study or an article linked to it. Because all these things have been studied and proven about how damaging uh, sugar can be on the body. Palm sugar? Okay, good. Let me give you a good alternative. Um, you know, because people still like to bake and things like that. This is going to be the new biggest, latest, greatest thing. Okay, it's palm sugar. It comes from a coconut palm, coconut tree. And it is much lower on the glycemic index. And the reason is because it's very high in minerals. It's very mineral dense. It's not like your processed white sugar. Right now, this is pretty expensive, but I think as it gets more popular, the cost will probably come down. And you can use it one-to-one -one as a replacement for like your white sugar that we know is very damaging to the body. So ideally, we want to get away from sugar altogether. But uh, until you get to that point, this is a much better alternative, palm sugar. Hey Vaughn, may I interject that they do have powdered stevia. It's in maltodextrin, but I can show you. They sell it at Walmart and all the stores. And until palm sugar comes down, it's a, that's what I use instead of sugar. Powdered and stevia? Powdered stevia right. and comes in big bags and it's like six bucks. Cool. And you use it cup for cup. Oh, really? You use it yeah. the same amount? That's yeah, cool. or you can use less. I have a bag in here. That's what I put in my paper smoothie. Um, All right. So I'm going to go into fats. And uh, if you have questions, just save them to the end because uh, I'm trying to get through like 10 hours of stuff here in 45 minutes. So I've done full classes, multiple classes on each of these subjects that are all on my website for free under the video section. Let's go to fats. Sugar and fats, I think, are the two biggest ones. I can't go into all the details right now, but it's processed sugar and it's eating the wrong fats that are causing heart disease and diabetes in America, killing one out of every two people in this country. Okay, this is serious. Like, you know, we sit up here and we have fun and we kind of laugh about it, but this is really killing people. This is really serious. My heart was very saddened this morning when I went to the store and I felt really burdened because I went to hy V and I bought all of this food that that causes sickness and disease in our body. And I spent $40 for all of this. Where I can go to Whole Foods and buy some cucumbers and some spinach and some carrots and spend $40. It's really sad. It shouldn't be that way. Okay. The reason this stuff is so cheap is because the stuff costs companies pennies and there's not one ounce of nutrition in it. Okay, that's why it's cheap. So it's, it's unfortunate, but that's why we all need to kind of Start growing our own gardens again. Start supporting local. Start going to the farmers market and create a demand for healthier for healthier foods. So I'm going to go to fats. Um, this one's big because 
Unfortunately, there's still such a misunderstanding and confusion about fats today. Um, and it shouldn't be that way because this information we've known since the 1930s. Since the 1930s, we've known butter is good for you and does not cause heart disease. We've known coconut oil is good for us and does not cause heart disease. In fact, it's the opposite. It's one of the healthiest things you can do for your heart, one of the healthiest things you can do for your blood pressure. It heals the veins and arteries. Um, we take it all the way back. When you're born and you're breastfed, what are you consuming? It's not a trick question. Fat is the answer. You're consuming saturated fat from breast milk. That's what produces your hormones, grows your nervous system, grows your brain. What does Alzheimer's come from? It's a fatty acid deficiency is one of the main known reasons for breeding low fat diets. Your brain's 90% saturated fat, okay? We've gone on low fat diets because we're scared of fat, but we're scared of the wrong things. What's happened since the 1930s is we've been lied to for 80 years. Uh, the truth still isn't fully known mainstream yet, but the lie was created by the vegetable oil industry and the margarine industry. I can't believe it's not butter. Country crop. Okay, we're told even today by doctors that this is healthy and butter causes heart disease. Okay, it's a lie. It's the opposite. This and processed sugar is heart disease, killing one out of two people. This is real. You guys really want to understand this. Okay, this stuff is fake, it's man-made, it's hydrogenated, and it damages the veins and arteries. And it causes blockages in the veins and arteries. It's like sludge in the veins and arteries because your body cannot process it. On the molecular it? level, the margarine in that tub is just a few molecules different than the plastic that it's in. It's, it's, yeah. One molecule yeah. from plastic, yeah. the hydrogenation process. So that's what it does to your body. That's why it gums up and thickens your bloodstream because this is like plastic in your body. <laughs> so what are the bad fats? Vegetable oils. Here's another lie, canola oil, okay? Canola oil is the last thing you should be using in cooking or in baking or anything. It's a trans fatty acid, it causes heart disease. Vegetable oil, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, really, we can have fun with this, but vegetable, what does that mean? Have you ever squeezed a cucumber and got oil out of it? <laughs> this is soybean oil, okay? Vegetable oil is soybean oil, okay? I, I've done whole classes on soy, but soy very dangerous. I have all kinds of stuff about soy. You gotta stay away from these vegetable oils. Trans fatty acids, they cause heart disease. So that's canola oil, soy oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, all the vegetable oils. So that's gonna be your fried foods. Why are fried foods so dangerous? They're fried in this stuff. You wanna fry food, fry it in coconut oil. What about olive oil? I have right here, I'll, get, I'll, I'll address that. This is Weston A. Price, Principles of a Healthy Diet. He'll tell you exactly in here what's a good fat, what's a bad fat, and what you should be cooking with. What you should be cooking with is saturated fat. Butter, coconut oil, lard, oh my gosh. Don't cook an animal fat, it causes heart disease. No, it doesn't. Um, Pre-1900, you look at any cookbook. They fried everything in lard and they ate lots of butter. And they didn't have heart disease. Okay, that's a little controversial today, okay? Because the vegetable oil industry wants you to believe that animal fat and butter causes heart disease, so you need to stay away from that and buy their products. Okay, so it's an 80 year lie, still going on, still killing people. Um, coconut oil. My opinion, one of the healthiest things that you can possibly consume. There's a good book called Coconut Cures, written by a naturopath, uh, Bruce Fife. Um, he did all the research, showed all the studies about how this heals the heart um, and the cardiovascular system. It's great for the skin, it's great for the hair. Women love this stuff. It makes them their skin look amazing. Um, it cuts your sugar cravings because it gives you healthy fats. It increases your metabolism. Take coconut oil for weight loss. Okay, it gives you sustainable fuel throughout the day so you're not craving and wanting sugar all the time. It balances your blood sugars. 
to keep you more stable. People are eating sugar and told to go on low fat diets, so their blood sugars are like this, okay? Children are starting the day with this, which I grew up on, and it throws their blood sugars out of whack, and teachers are saying the children have behavioral disorders. They don't have a behavioral disorder, they have a diet disorder, okay? Because we're eating foods propagated by giant food companies for breakfast that has no nutrition in it and it throws their blood sugars out of whack so they're, they're crazy during the day. There's no stability in their system. Um, so we're talking cereal, pancakes, muffins, everything we traditionally eat for breakfast is sugar and starch. We need to be eating eggs and green smoothies and fats and proteins and more stabilizing foods especially for breakfast. So if you want to fry something, fry it in coconut oil. This butter looks funny because it's from a local farmer. Um, <coughs> so it's raw butter. Um, what else do I have? Olive oil was, was asked. So ideally you want to cook in saturated fats. You can cook in olive oil, but ideally you want to cook in the saturated fats. Olive oil would be your second best choice if that's all you had. Other than that, you don't want to cook with any other oil ever. It's going to cause those uh, dangerous trans fatty acids. Um, let's see, what else? I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? Cook with saturated fats? Cook with saturated fats, coconut oil, butter, or animal fats. And um, Olive if, oil, the last. If, olive, if you have olive oil and you don't have any saturated fats, you can cook with olive oil, but don't cook with any other oil. Okay? Olive oil is best on, on salads, raw best way to get olive oil. Um, oh, I'm going to address milk real quick. I have a uh, pamphlet here called the Campaign for Real Milk. Um, we should be eating raw milk from local farmers. This stuff right here, I purposefully picked up skim milk because if you're going to buy milk at the grocery store, this is the last one you want to buy because it's low fat. Okay, the, the skim and the 1% and the 2%, the more processed it is. We need to eat things the way God created them. How did God create milk? Straight out of the cow. What are we scared of? Um, that's the way we've been consuming milk for thousands of years. So if you're going to buy milk in the grocery store, buy whole milk. It hasn't been processed as much. But this is a very dirty industry. The, the reason we pasteurize milk, um, well... I was going to say not to freak you out too much, but if you haven't heard this before, it's, it's the truth. Um, the reason they pasteurize and homogenize milk is it's an excuse to create a very, very dirty product. Okay, you have cows that are sick because they're fed corn. They don't eat corn, they eat grass. But they're fed corn, and if, if they didn't treat them with antibiotics because they get so many diseases from eating the corn, they would die within a couple of months. So they have to shoot them full of antibiotics and hormones so that they grow fast enough so they can get enough milk out of them before they die. The average dairy cow only lives two years. Well, the lifespan of a cow is much longer than two years. Um, so they create this really dirty product and they're able to sell it because they pasteurize it and kill all the bugs. Well, and also, you know, milk is, raw milk is a whole food. So it has protein, sugar, and fat, and so they start pulling the fat out, and then now they cause the imbalance, you know, which makes more fat, and it's, it's destructive to the system. Right. And the, we have a monastery school out in Western Shawnee, and it's state law now that we cannot, we have to feed preschoolers skim milk. We can't oh. even feed them, you know, 2% or whole milk, because uh, they're going to get fat. So there's a big uh, there's a big battle going on around the country right now to bring uh, real milk back because real milk is healthy. Like she said, it's a whole food. It's not a processed, pasteurized, homogenized, antibiotic, pus-filled, growth hormone-filled food. Okay, non-food, what I, what we call it. Um, well, anytime we so genetically modify a food, it destroys us. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about milk alternatives okay we got raw milk we can get from local farmers we're in kansas there's all kinds of local farmers around us i have a whole resources page on my website where you can call local farmers and get local milk 
We can do almond milk. We can do rice milk. We can do hemp milk, hazelnut milk, oat milk. Did I say coconut milk? There's all kinds of different nut milks and seed milks. We can do. They taste good. Okay. You're shaking your head. You, have you tried them? I've tried. I just want milk that tastes like the old. I don't want no flavor. Right. I don't want none of Did that. You say goat's milk? You just have to get the raw milk. Goat's milk. Yeah. Goat's milk. Raw goat's milk. Raw cow's milk. All that stuff. All right. I'm gonna talk about salt real quick because I think it's kind of like fats. We're scared of the wrong things. Uh, we're scared of salt. We're we're told it causes uh, high blood pressure and heart disease. Um, the problem is we have this uh, processed white table salt. Uh, this was not meant for human consumption. This is a product of industry. This is used to make pipe and carpet and building materials and all kinds of weird things. Um, people shouldn't be eating this. The reason they had to put iodine in it is because salt is just sodium chloride and it caused such an imbalance in the body that they had to, I had to add iodine to it so people didn't get goiter and have thyroid problems. So now you got two minerals in there. Um, it is really poisonous to the system because natural salt the way God created out of the earth has 80 plus naturally occurring minerals. So don't eat this. It's the name of the class, but eat this. Um, sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, have fun with this. Um, it doesn't cause high blood pressure. It doesn't cause heart disease. It doesn't cause hypertension. In fact, when I worked in Las Vegas, especially because so many people were dehydrated and had high blood pressure, I said, go home, put salt in your water, drink salt in your water every single day. I couldn't even tell you the scores of people that came back to me said their blood pressure is absolutely perfectly normal from adding salt to their water. We're scared of the wrong things. Don't be scared of salt. Eat sea salt. Normalizes blood pressure. You don't get a drop of water into any cell of your body without sodium. It's the most important mineral that goes in the human body. The word salary, sal, comes from salt. That's how people used to be paid. It was so important. No army would march across a desert without carrying bags of salt because they could not survive without it because it's how you get hydrated into your cells. It's a critical, critical nutrient. So low salt, so think about it, what we've already gone over. We've gone low salt, low fat. Nobody's addressing that sugar's a problem. So we're eating low fat, low sugar, and we're eating lots of starches, sugars, and carbs. I mean, is there any reason why we don't understand why we have such high rates of disease in this country? It's our food. Um, grains. How am I doing on time? I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, uh, grains. So I, sp I specifically brought a few things. I'm a big fan of the ancient seed grains. So I'm a, uh, I love quinoa. And this is, you can get this at uh, Costco now. Okay. Wild rice, you can get this at Costco. This is called quinoa flakes. You can make this like a breakfast cereal, like a breakfast porridge. The reason these are better is because they're whole foods and they don't contain gluten. So many people have issues with gluten. Uh, gluten causes a lot of uh, bowel and intestinal disorders in people. It's linked to Hashimoto's disease and other autoimmune conditions. It's linked to infertility. Uh, it's the reason, the reason is because the gluten and the bread is so processed these days. The grains are so heavily processed, they're very hard for the body to digest. And we just abuse them. You know, we eat sugared cereals in the morning and toast and bagels and then for lunch we have a sandwich and then dinner we have a hamburger bun with ham you know we're just eating bread and processed grains all the time and they're very hard for the body to process and what we're doing is we're weakening our systems and we're passing it down generation to generation and now children have obesity children have diabetes children have cancer children have celiac and autoimmune diseases ADD, ADHD, autism never used to happen before never used to happen before. So we have to reverse this trend. Um, the other ones I like are millet. I don't think I have that here. Here's buckwheat flour. I have pancake recipes on my website using buckwheat flour. Buckwheat's actually a berry, the buckwheat berry. Um, oats, you can actually buy gluten-free oats. These are gluten-free oats to make oatmeal. Um, 
I don't want to get too much into detail in it, but the problem with brains is just like with everything else, God made them one way originally, and we've altered that to the point where it's a non-food. And the body, because it was created by God, the foods that he made have intelligence, they have information to our cells, and if you alter that, all of a sudden the body doesn't recognize what you're putting into it. So that's what creates the disease and the disharmony. So all this stuff the body cannot recognize. In fact, it's such a poison to the body that the, all the body can do is store it somewhere or you know, store it in the tissue, store it as fat, try to eliminate it, but eventually the toxicity in the body catches up and that's where disease comes from. All, all disease is the toxicity condition, toxicity in the body. So that's what all this is building in the body. And the grains specifically are high in something called phytic acid, which is really hard for the body to process. Um, so what we need to do is we need to soak and or sprout them. This is the way, if you look up the way grains were processed back in the ancient days, is they were soaked and they were sprouted. And a lot of times this naturally happened. They cut it in the field, it would rain or dew a little bit, it would it'd be in the sun and it would sprout, and all this would occur naturally. I specifically chose, you notice I don't even have white bread here? Like that's just way assumed now, right? <laughs> like anybody who doesn't even know anything about health knows white bread's not healthy. We might still eat it, but we know it's not good for us. Just like when we go through McDonald's drive through we know it's not healthy, but we do it anyway. Um, I chose whole wheat bread because people think whole wheat bread's healthier. It's not, just because it's brown, it's not healthy. Um, it's still a grain, it's still a starch, it's still processed, it's still loaded with sugar and all kinds of weird chemicals in it. <coughs> Almost all of these breads, especially like these big companies here like Wonder Bread, um, it's high fructose corn syrup. It's high fructose corn syrup and sugar. The soybean oil, which causes the heart disease, um, Molasses, cultured whey, vinegar, sodium sterile, lactate. You know, then it's got about 10 things you can't pronounce you've never heard of. So I chose wheat bread on purpose. And then I even went and got this because a lot of what we fall for today is marketing. Like General Mills know Cheerios isn't a health food. But if they can convince moms that it's got more fiber and it's got some yeah. calcium now, people are going to buy it and not feel as guilty for giving it to their children. Um, it's all marketing. It's all marketing. So this is whole grain, healthy, multi-grain bread. Now, obviously companies use a lot of buzzwords, all natural, 100% pure, healthy. I mean, there's no standards to these words. You can say whatever you want on a food label. Okay. But um, with this bread, again, if you look at the ingredients, water, sugar, wheat gluten, brown rice, cornmeal, wheat bran, yeast, soybean oil, salt, molasses, datum. I don't even know that. Does anybody know what datum is? D-A-T-E-M? Um, oh, the kind of sugar? Brown sugar. Calcium propionate. Monoglycerides, calcium sulfate, vinegar, soy lecithin, citric acid, and calcium carbonate. Healthy multigrain bread. Okay, it's just advertising. Um, so where do we overconsume grains? It's all the processed foods: pizza, pretzels, crackers, goldfish. I mean, just all this processed flour that we're consuming. Um, and we have to be careful when we go to the health food stores because the health food stores are still about 80% junk food. You, know, you can go to the gluten-free section and eat lots of rice and starch and cornmeal and soy and all kinds of things. So just because you're staying away from gluten or just because you're eating a healthy cracker doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Okay, it's still processed, it's still starch, it's still grain, it's still got sugar in it. We really need to eat whole foods. That's really the premise eating whole foods the way God created them as close as possible. So I have some information up here on myths and truths about cholesterol. Okay. Again, butter, coconut oil is what we should be eating. 
doctors are giving people a heart disease diet, which they're saying stay away from butter, stay away from coconut oil, stay away from all these healthy things and eat margarine and eat vegetable oil. That's the heart disease diet. So you want to learn the truth about that. I have an article on butter, I have an article on cod liver oil, what a trans fatty acid is, it really explains that in detail. Uh, principles of a healthy diet, it's a good one. Oh, and I have this article on salt too. This kind of explains uh, salt for people who are interested in that as well. So let's, uh, let's open it up to questions. Yes. I see it back there behind the milk. Could you talk about the diet code? Sure. I have a I have a handout that I give people, and it's called the Basic Ten. Like, what are the first ten things that you should do if you want to take the first ten steps towards better health? And the number one most damaging, dangerous thing I think can possibly put in the human body, unless you purposefully like drink a vial of mercury or something. <laughs> the number one most damaging thing that goes in the human system is soda pop. And what's worse than regular soda pop is diet soda pop. Again, marketing, thinking you're doing zero caffeine, zero calories, zero sugar is the most deceptive thing you can possibly do to your body. In fact, studies show that aspartame is is linked to, I can't even tell you how many diseases, it's the number one complaint registered to the FDA every year. There's thousands and thousands of lawsuits right now against um, aspartame, and it's illegal in most of the rest of the world, if that tells you anything. Um, but this is a chemical that causes disease, it's linked to Alzheimer's and all kinds of neurological diseases, it's a neurotoxin. So what it does is damages the nervous system, it's linked to MS, multiple sclerosis, um, and it absolutely 100% without a doubt causes weight gain. Why? Because it's a synthetic chemical the body does not understand. People who drink diet soda over regular soda get fatter. That's proven. Okay. But the bottom line is either one of them are toxic to the body. I mean, how, how many rivers did God make flowing with diet soda? You know, every animal on the planet, they drink water. There's not one exception to that. You know, why we drink these things, I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, I shouldn't say that because I drink them most of my life. Uh, but when we get wisdom and knowledge to what we're putting in our body, I think it's really wise to make better choices. I mean, just the fact that people are addicted to this should tell you something. I mean, God did not make things we're addicted to. We, I mean, is anybody really addicted to like tomatoes or avocado? I mean, you might really, really like them. You might really like them, but super, concentrated man-made chemicals is what causes addiction okay and that's what happens with aspartame I mean people are literally addicted to this it's killing them and they can't get off it and they know it's killing them and they can't get off it that's how addictive it is just like I talked about the sugar it triggers the same dopamine receptors in the brain that cocaine and heroin do. same exact dopamine heal dope receptors and by the way this is funny I didn't even mention this but this syrup like if you think this is maple syrup, it's not. I hope you guys know that. Um, the ingredients in this is corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, water, artificial flavors, and caramel color. The reason I bought this uh, this whole wheat cracker is you know what this makes different. How this is different than the white cracker? Caramel color. What the white cracker doesn't have in it that this has in it? Caramel coloring. That's what makes it look brown and pretty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, any other questions? I see the whole wheat spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. So again, I chose whole wheat stuff on, on purpose to make the point that just because it's brown doesn't mean it's good for you. It's still a processed, refined starch. Okay, we really need to be eating whole foods, whole quinoa flakes, whole oats that are oatmeal. Um, not that you can't have this once in a while. Yes, it's a better choice than the white pasta, but we are a starch sugar consumption society and, and we need to limit that. If you look at a traditional diet, which you can read in here, pretty much what everybody in every culture around the world ate, depending on you know what they had available to them, we've never eaten the starch and sugar that we have today. It's all because of our processed food supply in these giant food companies. So we just, we're just overdoing it. Yes? If they're not um, uh, 
a whole wheat spaghetti that's out that's low on the glycemic index. Um, did I buy the... Uh, um, I thought there was. I didn't get it. There, there's a uh, quinoa pasta. There's, they do have quinoa pasta. You can get it at Whole Foods. Hi D actually has quite a bit of health, healthy stuff these days. They're getting more and more. Um, I... Quinoa. Quinoa. Use this instead of pasta. Delicious. It's amazing. As the kids say, delicious. Quinoa salad. <laughs> I have a recipe on my website. Uh, Jen made up. Where's my wife? Yeah, delicious. She disappeared. Okay. She made a, a turkey meatballs over quinoa pasta. So turkey meatballs and use the quinoa as the pasta. Oh my gosh, it is phenomenal. And she the made fried thing, rice with that this morning. That was. Oh, that was with eggs. That yeah, was really good. with eggs and onions and potatoes. And the other thing you can do for pasta is um, zucchini pasta. So get a spiralizer and take zucchini and make it into like angel hair pasta. Same thing, put the meatballs with the marinara sauce over that and it's phenomenal. So, any other questions? Cool. All right, thanks guys.